Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in yesterday's one we tested the new Ryzen 5 8400F, an AM5 6 core 12 thread CPU that I ended up not really being that enthusiastic about. For the money I think there are better options such as the 7500F and 7600 as well as other choices from Intel that will perform better. Now the top comment on that video was asking about a comparison between the 8400F and the Intel i5 8400. Now the i5 8400 dates back to 2017, it's a socket 1151 Coffee Lake CPU that does have 6 cores and to be honest I already know the outcome of this video, I mean the 8400F despite not being easy to recommend is going to blow the i5 out of the water right? But Let's see which one of them is more deserving of the namesake in 2024. Just to appease that top commenter and to be honest, to tell you the truth, I'm quite fascinated to know as well. There were a lot of thumbs up on that uh, comment, so I mean, we just have to check it out, don't we? So let's see how the Ryzen 5 8400F, a modern 6 core 12 thread AM5 CPU compares to the i5 8400 that to be honest, holds up fairly well these days, but uh, is starting to show its age when paired with a modern high-end card. First of all, the test setup then, of course, the i5-8400 uses DDR4 RAM. I'm using 32 gigs of 3200 MHz in dual channel mode. The Ryzen 5 8400F uses DDR5, so I'm using 6400 MHz, dual channel, 32 gigs. Um, yeah, we also have rebar support for the 4070 Super with the modern ball, but I turned it off for the sake of trying to make it a somewhat fairer test. Um, the 4070 Super will run in PCIe X8 mode, PCIe 4.0 X8 mode with the modern chip, and PCIe 3.0 X16 mode with the older i5-8400. So that's interesting to note, but it certainly won't help us out here. <laughs> but... Let's get into the gaming results and see which one will come out on top. Spoiler alert, it's going to be the Ryzen, isn't it? But is it even close? Will the i5 come within just a few frames per second in some instances? Who knows? Well, I do, but let's have a look. First up here, we have Fallout 4 at 1080p with the Ultra preset. Now, the i5 managed 115 FPS on average with a 1% low of 72 and a 0.1% low of 40. So it wasn't that bad, but you are going to see some issues with those percentile figures, which reflects the consistency of the game, of course. That said, the Ryzen 5 8400F wasn't without its own little problems, although 149 FPS was the average, and I don't recommend recommending playing with a frame rate like this because the game will be all sped up. There were also a few issues with the percentile numbers. I've tried to test a mixture of older and newer titles just for the sake of the older CPU as well. Kingdom Come Deliverance is up next. I'm really looking forward to the sequel, but for now I'm replaying through the original game and it's just as fun and graphically demanding as it ever was. Now on the i5, we saw 85 FPS with a pretty bad 1% low of 36 and an even worse 0.1% low of 7. So yeah, this is quite CPU intensive in and around Rattai here and it certainly puts the i5 through its paces. We could definitely do with 12 threads, which we don't have with the Intel chip. We do, however, have them with the Ryzen CPU. Starfield was a bit of a disaster on the i5, 43 FPS. It's clear the CPU is the primary limitation here. 27 was that 1% low and the 0.1% low was 25. So it wasn't really inconsistent. It was just, well, as I've said before, consistently bad. Now with the Ryzen 5, we saw 76 FPS, but again, this wasn't without its issues. The 1% low was 59 and the 0.1% low was 28. So not actually too different from the i5 in terms of that 0.1% figure. We saw frame time issues with both processors, issues that were definitely noticeable and did put me off in some instances when playing Starfield. The Witcher 3 up next, now this was night and day in terms of a difference, I think the i5 did fairly well with 82 FPS, the 1% low was 44 and the 0.1% low was 36, so it's pretty consistent I have to say. That said, the Ryzen 5 managed 143 FPS with a 1% low of 100 and a 0.1% low of 74, so it definitely holds up better as expected in and around those busy town areas. As I said at the start, we're literally comparing these two for the sake of their names, no one 
in their right mind is going to be considering whether or not they should get the i5-8400 from 2017 or the Ryzen 5 8400F from 2024. I don't think that's a realistic comparison or consideration that anyone is thinking about, but there we go. Cyberpunk 2077 up next, this suffered quite a lot with the older i5 58 FPS, the 1% low was 30 and the 0.1% low was 24, so again not bad in terms of consistency, but there were a few issues overall here. The Ryzen 5 managed 93 FPS with a 1% low of 58 and a 0.1% low of 46, so there are still a few dips below 60 frames per second, but of course it made for the far more consistent experience. Not even close. So to finalise then we have the beautiful Red Dead Redemption 2 with the ultra textures, everything else set to high. Once again the i5 8400F sorry 8400 there is no f variant of this cpu well this did pretty well with 73 fps i still think it's a respectable chip and one that can be found quite cheaply plus you can always upgrade to an i7 8700 on this platform still you know if you're looking to put together something cheap i wouldn't recommend pairing it with a 4070 super i'd say probably a 3060 ti at most really um or a 3060 something like that maybe a 2070 at most uh, but anyway 73 fps for this cpu here 56 as the one percent low and a 0.1 percent low of 49 the 8400 f ryzen managed 125 as an average with 95 and 89 so we got what we were expecting to be fair but i hope this answers the question is the i5 8400 comparable to the 8400F Ryzen. As expected, no it isn't, but it certainly was fun to see just how big the difference was and hopefully you feel the same. So if you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Thanks for watching as always. If you are thinking about getting the Ryzen 5 8400F, my advice would be to look out for the 7500F or 7600 instead if it's not much more expensive because either of those two will be the better options as I discussed in yesterday's video. If you're thinking about getting an older i5 8400, um, maybe only do so if you've got an old 1151 motherboard and you're putting together a really cheap PC. As I said, you can also always upgrade to the 8700i7 with 6 cores and 12 threads. But yeah, this platform is probably best avoided to be fair. In 2024, I'd recommend at the minimum these days probably an i3-12100F if you're looking to put together a cheaper uh, system that can handle all the latest and greatest titles, of course. That's a 4 core 8 thread chip, but it's still pretty capable and you've got a bit of an upgrade path. Alternatively, the Ryzen 5 3600 is still sold new in some outlets so I'd recommend looking into one of those but in terms of this comparison well the obvious happened I think but it was certainly fun to check these two out side by side and I hope you enjoyed it as well thanks for watching and I'll see you next time